do not have any right to make your hate our problem. Well, no. <laughs> There are steps that trans people have to take in their transitions to earn certain privileges. Women-only spaces are not women plus pretty men. They are women-only spaces. Don't know how many ways we can say this. Your only option is male, and if you're not comfortable going into the male space, then don't. Physical assault or voyeurism or harassment in bathrooms are incredibly statistically rare. You could have said back in the day, there's no empirical evidence that the Catholic Church abuses kids. Until there was. They want to be able to inspect her genitals to use a bathroom? I just can't believe she embarrassed herself like that. I don't know. I've told a couple of people that I'm doing this episode, and then I show them a video and they're like, oh. The most I'll say to them is like, I'm sorry you don't like being male, but you're going to have to deal with it. Just because you feel threatened by trans people doesn't mean trans people pose a threat to you. If you feel sickened by trans existence, then you are literally the one who is sick, not us. This is how I know that trans people are on the right side of history. Because in my world, everyone deserves the freedom and autonomy to exist in their truth. Even you. You have every right to hate us. You have every right to think we're sick or going to hell because ultimately that is your poison. But you do not have any right to claim autonomy over our bodies or our freedom to just be. You do not have any right to make your hate our problem. If only you would stop mistaking your fear for divine resonance and take a moment to look inward, then you would find a universal love that is just begging to be held. That love is the power that you see us walking in. That love is our light that is just too bright for you. Not because it's wrong, but because you've spent too much time with the lights off. Now, I wish that you would wake up, but like I said, that is your choice. You can stay afraid. Just stop trying to drag us back into the dark. It will never work. I love you. And once you love you, then you will be able to love me. Well, no. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's... Oh. You've probably um... changed your mind now, right? I'm utterly convinced there's the argument I've been looking for. Um, no, like, that's just, that's all, that's all, he's saying nothing, nothing. We're not threatened, we're not threatened by them in this, in this way that they think they are. Like, a woman threatened by predatory men? Yes. Like, if we can have the conversations that all we're actually talking about, rather than just talking over each other, but I'm not threatened of someone because they say they're trans. I just don't believe it. In the same way, I'm not threatened by someone saying that they're Christian. I just don't believe it. Yeah. I think it's it's such a shame. You know, I, I talk about this stuff a lot because a lot of young people are, you know, being being captured by these influencers who have millions of followers. And they have, you know, one thing I'll give them is they have a way to spin things to make themselves sound convincing. And they're, I mean, to, to young people, at least, I mean, lots of old people too, but you know, the whole rhetoric around, I mean, I just find it quite pathetic because imagine if Christians came on the street tomorrow and said, if you don't believe our ideology, we don't exist. And, you know, like just trying to be so self-deprecating and all the hyper, the hyperbole of, okay, yeah, you disagree with me. You may even think you do what you want with your surgeries, maybe have a third space, but then you are, you know, infringing on my truth, my reality, my existence. Yeah, I also think that there's protection there. Like, you know, just like if you look within and like love yourself and you'll love me, it's like, mm. like, I'm not the one pretending to be something I'm not. Mm. So... Yeah, it just doesn't scream like, it, it doesn't come off like as confident. Not a single person who claims to be the opposite sex comes off as someone who's like confident about it. I don't think. Yeah. Like these like truly like, have fallen into it. Um, they're just desperate for people to believe it. Because at the end of the day, like any man can just like go and wear makeup and have so like go get a boob job and wear a dress. Like it is your wife. Like do it. it but the only way for him to be a woman is to force everyone else to have that belief. And so they're just utter, like utterly desperate for people to believe it because 
if we don't believe it, then then it, it they don't exist. But it's like yeah. it's just ideas. It's we're all hu all human beings who are alive now exist. Just whether your idea is true or not is a totally different issue, and your particular idea is not true. Yeah, and I think this is why we need to shatter that oppressor oppression scale because. Just people are so blind to how trans activists behave. You know, in the gay rights liberation movement, sure, you would have had some riots and obviously strong words being imposed. But like this level of, oh, well, we're fighting for our rights. So all of this abuse is granted. So many people are looking the other way saying, oh, but, you know, you have to understand where they're coming from. Um, yeah, I mean, I just... I don't think women got the right to vote because by like threatening to murder men. Um, I know that them. they like, yeah, yeah, that's what they over the line. It was the rape threats. Um, yeah, I mean, I know that like the suffragettes did some pretty extreme things to get attention, but it was like to themselves kind of thing. They right. weren't like, you know, they, it was just, it was just different. This is, and if, because their premise is also based in truth, and so they were trying to, you know, be heard. This isn't because they're not asking for rights; they're asking for privileges. Mm -hmm. Like it is actually not a human right to force people to believe what you believe. It just mm -hmm. isn't. You can't, and it's also not a human right to take away rights from other people. But that's what they're doing when they and they. It's happening all the time at the moment. This, like, they'll go, it's quite amusing. They're like, you know, why is anyone even making an issue out of bathrooms? And then um, literally they'll talk at the other side of their mouth saying, like, this is the, you know, this will make the country better if we allow this. You know, what are you talking about? Like, we're not making the issue of this. We're saying no to the issue. They're making the issue. And so if they just actually went, look, all we actually want is third spaces because that's what would accommodate us. Okay, let's have that conversation. Oh my God, imagine if Stonewall and Glad had spent all their money on that campaigning. They would have... Well, I mean, because literally women had to campaign to get women, bath women in the bathrooms. That was actually something we did. And also disabled people had to campaign to get disabled bathrooms. It, they weren't just... None of this was given to us. We all did the work for it. So... What do you need? A third space? Do the work. Yeah. But they don't want that. This man was grooming himself at the mirror sink. So the woman who took this photo asked the man to leave. Trans people, we need to be realistic. If you know you look like a full-grown man, then you know damn well you should not be in women's spaces. And I'm speaking as an actual trans person that transitioned over 10 years ago. There are steps that trans people have to take in their transitions to earn certain privileges. And I'm not afraid to say it. Do stories like this really help our cause? Shaving your beard in a women's locker room in front of children? What is with the damn rush to go into women's locker rooms? Focus on your transition, not locker rooms. Even I didn't step foot in women's spaces until I knew I was ready. If you know you're not ready and don't want to close a scene, just wait. Give it time. You will get there. Most of us are just trying to blend in with society. We're not trying to cause a commotion. Unfortunately, we live in a world where presentation is everything. Taking hormones for two days and identifying as a woman is not enough. Whether you guys like it or not, these are the kinds of people that get all the media attention that make everyone fucking hate us. And because of them, these lawmakers have an excuse to make these ridiculous laws that affect all of us. Please don't blame all trans people for the way some of us act, because we're not all like this. Um, that's actually like, oh, that's the, the most sinister. Because that's, that's, that's encouraging pharmaceuticals and surgery. Um, but again, women-only spaces are not women plus pretty men. Or like women-only spaces aren't women plus, me women plus men with plastic surgery. They are women-only spaces. Don't know how many ways we can say this. You're not a woman. You're a guy with plastic surgery and makeup. Campaign for third spaces, if, you, if that's what you need. Yeah, it's funny because I think... Again, to someone who's not familiar with this stuff, they would see that and think it's quite reasonable. 
And I will say Eden, this creator, I think, you know, I do think Eden's really funny and has lots of other content that's enjoyable. So I'm not really against Eden entirely, but just that in itself, like you said, how much is focused on, on me, 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 because Eden says, you know, we have to do certain things before we gain certain privileges. And then it's like, but who, who, who's giving you the privilege? Because no one is, you're just taking it because you're deciding now I'm, now I pass. So now I'm going to take this privilege. Yeah. But it's also, it's really sinister because what he's saying is to like young, confused, vulnerable, abused, or, or sick incel boys to go and go to the extremes, go and take the hormones, go and have the surgeries, go and either crowdfund or, or spend all your money on this, get, get, go fully in on this. It's recruitment. No, I can't support a single sentence of it. What do you say? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to guess what you're going to say, but what about the percentage of and some people will say they actually never pass. But I mean, if there is a tiny percentage who literally are completely incognito, how do you feel about that? I mean, because they might break the laws even if they're there. And then if, if someone who actually passes as a woman, you know, you can argue that point. But if that person is faced with just two options, male and female, um, I sort of understand both arguments, but I lean more on the, well, you know, you are a male and this is your issue. So you have to deal with your issue rather than it being women's issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, first of all, they don't, it, especially in real life, you take away the filters and the good lighting and stuff. There's so many different signifiers that actually tell you that make us understand that somebody is of the sex they are. And we all recognize it really, really quickly. So what can happen sometimes is that you can be like, something's off here. And then a few seconds later, you realize what it is, especially these days. And I suppose for us that are so involved in it, um, for someone who's not involved in it at all, at all, it might be just a confusion of like, hang on, my my brain is picking up a signal of one thing because like, you know, it can be like your walking gait, like just it's because it's, it's your overall body. It's every cell of your body is sex. So you just, it, it's just, it's not just boobs and makeup. Um, it's true that some women who claim to be men kind of pass a little bit better in the sense that receding hairlines and beards do a lot of the heavy lifting now. A lot of them are also so tiny, like, and looks like we just suddenly there's like a, like a pod that's creating lots of like jockeys. Like it's just. <laughs> <laughs> Which just, it's just, <laughs> and I. That was a good one. Like, if you are a, a man who is doing everything possible to look like a woman, and then you're faced in a situation where it's only male or female, your options, you are male. Your only option is male. And if you're not comfortable going into the male space, then don't. Like, the thing about male and female-only spaces is that they're restricted of who can use them, but you're not forced to use them. You can self-exclude from them. This is what some people seem to forget. So it's, it is your responsibility to find other accommodations for that. It's not, it doesn't, it's just, you, you, it's, if you give an inch, you take a mile. And this is where it comes back to the fact that the most important thing about this is it's just not true. If you let one man into a woman-only space, it is immediately no longer a woman-only space. You're now dealing with a unisex space and we weren't able to have any consent into that. Also, I think men can also have male-only spaces for privacy and dignity and recreationally. It's not just bathrooms and change rooms. You guys can also have, like, I think gay male-only bars and clubs are important. I think, like, I don't know. I don't know if men want a male-only book club, maybe. Oh, whatever it is, like, have it. Um, also, we do know that there are male predators out there. One of the things we do know about male predator predators is that they love an isolated female. And so I'm very nervous of the fact that there are young, vulnerable women going into male-only spaces and on whatever end of the scale, they either think they're passing or they do. The moment that a male predator gets a whiff that there's a woman there, it, that's a dangerous situation for her. So I just don't think this works on any level. And I also think, and I, well, I know I've heard a lot of stories, but a lot of, the, a lot of women who claim to be men are having issues, but they're not reporting and they're not doing anything about it because it crumbles the whole ideology. 
Ah. Have you heard anything specifically? Yeah, I've heard. A lot of it's like, I mean, these women aren't coming to me and going, oh, I've been sexually assaulted. I've heard it's all second, third hand accounts. And because they're not reporting them. Um, mm. But they are, they are sometimes anonymously posting about it online and things. And so if you can take that for what it is, but it, it's just, you know, you just, you, the, the, it, a social contract is being broken here. And there's only one type of person who benefits from that, and it's a male predator. Good men don't even benefit from this. Yeah, I mean, so I pretty much agree with everything you say. It's just the, you know, female to male, you know, testosterone, beard, all of this. Uh, I, I'm very involved in this debate too, and I've met some trans men in real life. I have actually been able to tell because I kind of have learned what to look for. Um, yes. That's not to say I could tell every single time, but I understand that they're female, therefore they belong in female-only space. But there are lots of those females, if they walked into a women's changing room, like some women would jump out of their skin at first, at oh, least. I mean, how do, you do, totally how, how do you deal with that scenario? Because, okay, I write about this a lot. I respond to a lot of people who think they've got a gotcha online with this. Um, and as I said before... You're not obligated to use a female in this space. It's there if you are female. So if you are a female who has gone above and beyond to look like a man, I would hope that that person um, understands that that it could be, you know, shocking. Because as this was, as I said, we've been so involved in this, we know what to look for now. But you know, lots of women aren't involved and they don't know, and they they could be at least initially taken like really taken aback and scared um and then also you know you don't want to think i am actually a woman in having that conversation it, it, it just doesn't work none of this works um so it's really on them to self-exclude that would be the demographic i would say that very much would require a third only space my argument against third spaces is that i don't want to encourage this ideology so i don't want to accommodate it in any way because we want to like we want it to stop because it's not working but at the same time we still are going to have to accommodate all of these people who have made like lifelong choices with it and what are we going to do there so that they, they are they are that that's probably why i would say that the uh, men male female and a unisex space is probably what's going to have to happen but if she, you know, if she's dying for the bathroom, can't self-exclude because there's only two options. She goes into the female bathroom and then a bunch of women scream. What is she then supposed to say, but I'm, I'm trans, I'm actually a woman? As in kind of, there are some of those scenarios I think will be difficult to navigate. I mean, or, or she uses the male, the male only one and takes it up, you know, men have to defend their spaces. You know what I mean? I mean, from where I'm coming from, I'm, you know, most of the thing that we're fighting for is just to keep the men out of women-only spaces. And so if men want um, women kept out of male-only spaces, I'll support them in that, in that fight. But, you know, we all only have so many hours in a day. So I'm like, if there's some men who say let her in, I, I, as I said before, I don't think it's safe for them to go in there. Um, if you're in this busting situation... Yeah, I mean, I, I get it, life happens. But as you can see, to make such a ridiculous, like just to make this decision on your life, to live this lie, and then what it creates, these problems of just where to pee, like something just so basic, this becomes such a drama. It's like, obviously, this decision is not working. Mm hmm even if they use the bathroom next to me and my daughters, you're saying... Uh, Ali, you've probably used a bathroom alongside a trans okay, person many times Okay, you're acting like they noticed. go incognito. Okay, like, do, I, I can see... I, no, I probably haven't. I would have noticed. It's very, very noticeable. You can't, you can't always notice. Um, sometimes it's very noticeable. Sometimes it's not noticeable at all. It and I think you'd be very uncomfortable or your daughters would be time. uncomfortable next to um, Buck Angel or somebody with a beard and muscles in the women's room. But that's the policy you're advocating for here. I am. I am advocating for 
women and men to be in sex separate spaces. Yes. And I guess I just see the whole thing as a solution in a search of a problem. Instances of physical assault or voyeurism or harassment in bathrooms are incredibly statistically rare. And these gender identity ordinances that they've passed in many blue areas that allow people to use their gender identity, their preferred bathroom, those don't correspond with any increase empirically in those crimes and those offenses, according to a whole host of studies. So I view the whole thing as kind of a culture war outrage that's solving a problem that isn't really there, but would have some actually pretty messed up consequences, like forcing trans men who are biologically female, but many of whom have huge muscles, full beards and appear as men to use the women's bathroom and to use the women's locker room. And I think that would make women uncomfortable, if not unsafe. So I, I, I chose this one because um, like Brad is an ally of mine, actually, we've done videos together and he's more on the gender critical side when it comes to a lot of these issues. But I thought this was interesting because of what he said, as a lot of people were disagreeing with him. So, yeah, I mean, did you know, like one of the um, like signs of it, earlier signs of a sexual predator, like when they like in criminology and things, it was voyeurism. Before like sex offenders go on to rape and things like that, they usually start with voyeurism. Mm. Um, putting cameras in women's spaces or whatnot like, is is a thing. Um, and so now they're just in there taking pictures and they're stunning and brave. Um, you know, they always say, you know, well, how could you, you know, how can you even stop a man from going in? And it's like, well, first of all, there's that social contract, but also we used to have the power to like, I don't know, call the police. But now we're, we're bigots in lots of jurisdictions. We're the ones who would be punished. So he's just, he's just actually wrong about like how rare things are. No, but he, even if it was really, really rare, that is why safeguarding exists is still to protect. Like you're just asking us to just give up everything and, and saying that, you know, it was saying something like it's not a big deal or whatever. It's like, no, say that to them. Like, as in, we are just saying no to their demands. We didn't, it, if no one was claiming to be a woman, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Like, what I would be saying, I, 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 would, I would literally sound like a crazy person because I would literally be talking about a problem that didn't exist, but the problem does exist. And we're saying we want it to end and we're saying, we're saying, no, you can't use woman only spaces. Go find some other way to do that. The fact that in what a decade now of this fight, they've never once done anything serious about third spaces tells you that they're not interested in going and finding an accommodation like that. Buck Angel is always used as the example as well. I, I know, like I've talked to Buck so many times. Um, and I, I think Buck does use male only spaces, which I mean, I don't agree with. I just, I just don't agree with that. Because, you know, it, it's just either it's just either the rules are the rules or they're not. I think that Buck, as the pioneer of trans, could have actually spent some time going, "Hey, you know what we're going to need? Third spaces." And that was a huge oversight. And now look at where we are. So yeah, it, it just all comes back to it's just they're not women plus some men spaces; they're women's spaces. I like how you can just, you can say it so simply, if you know what I mean. And sometimes that, that's what the argument needs. But I wanted to refer to, um, yeah, so, so this claim about there being no empirical evidence. I'm just wondering, like, do you, do you know more context about that? Because I just have this thread here. So just a few examples. So this is a sample of trans rapists who've attacked women or children in female facilities. So this guy identifies as a woman, goes by the name Michelle, found guilty remember, of these are just the ones, second degree. These are just the ones that have been reported and then got media attention. There's so many more. And the ones that don't get attention. Most women, like, because if you see a man and a woman, if, if you see one in your space, you're just going to self-exclude. You're just going to get out of there as quickly as possible. So it's like a non-story, but you've still had to self-exclude. You've still been scared. It's not enough to go to the police over. Like, so I just, they're, it's demonstrably false. I actually had this argument put to me. I, 
I spoke at um, the a commission in the state that I live in in Queensland at the beginning of 2023 when they were doing their self ID laws, and I'd asked if I could come and like give evidence, and they said no to me. But Rachel Wong, who's the CEO of Women's Forum Australia, she was very very kind. She she got an invite to go and speak and she could bring a guest. So she took me. And so we played like good cop, bad cop, because she's very, very sweet and not. So we, they literally sat there to us saying there's no evidence um, of any harm. We were specifically talking at this point about prisons and sport. And they're like, there's no evidence of harm. And we were like, well, that's just not true. Can we make a submission to you? And they allowed us. And so we put together, I think it was 20 pages and these were just the names that, and cases that we were able to find on Google, like simple Google search of men, like really violent men in prisons who were now claiming to be women who were either already in women's prison or demanding access to them. And then for the sport of how many opportunities had been taken away from women. We just, like, we just listed and just like, and here's the link and here's the link. And so it's like, so anyone who's saying there's no evidence, it's like, it's so easy. It's there. Like we eventually had to stop because we were like, I think we've made our point. They're not going to read more than 20 pages, but we could have kept going. And then we're like, in there, the government, they can go, they've got more resources to go and find out like, you know, more data on this. We don't have that. So it's just like, just a simple Google search can prove them all wrong. This is why I say like, they're, they're just not looking. You have to be actively avoiding it at this point. Yeah. You just don't want to, the evidence. Like, I mean, what yeah, are and just, like, like, is would that be would that be enough? Would one rape a day? Is it ten rapes a day? What, what is it that they want? Would they go off? Oh my maybe gosh! There's a yeah, there's the, there's two things I'd say to this. And first of all, I don't want to misrepresent what Brad said because they, they were only talking about bathrooms, not other spaces. But it but but it's still I still have the same rebuttal to it. Um, so no empirical evidence. Well. It's like, do we need empirical evidence? Because I'm showing this, right? You can say I'm cherry picking. And people use this argument against illegal immigration. They say, oh, well, people in America commit crimes too. Uh, and you say, yes, but if we weren't allowing millions of illegal immigrants into the country, those crimes would have been prevented. At least we could have prevented those crimes. So it's like, well, men might go into a bathroom and rape women anyway. And it's like, okay. That may happen, but there are ones we can prevent. So should we not still prevent those? And then the second part is, you know, you could have said back in the day, there's no empirical evidence that the Catholic Church abuses kids until there was, you know, like, like you said, safeguarding is in place to stop outlier cases. And when you remove the safeguarding, then the loophole is open. I've never been robbed. I still lock my door every day and night like i and it's also abuse and and harassment and different things it comes in various different ways like you know it's because some people will be like you know like say like a woman only app like what i do like why do you need the safety of that um because you know misogyny online is a thing the future is on, like, we live our lives more and more online. Why can't we have the spaces that we have in the real world online as well? And also, you know, the person who's taken me to court is a man who won't take no for an answer. And so I want a female-only space to get away from a man who won't take no for an answer. And so... Mm -hmm. At the moment, that's being taken away from me, both in the digital world and the real world. So to say that there's no empirical evidence, well, I'm living it. Why does it have to be physical violence? Like, what's, do we not care? Like, is it only, do we only care about psychological things when it's a trans person experiencing it? Like, is that the only mental health we care about in society these days? What about the women who are being gaslit that these men are women? Yeah. Does how that is impacting us not matter? Like there's so, there's so many layers to this. And to just like, if we want to talk about there being no evidence for something, there is no evidence that men are women. End of story. It's the only evidence that well, should matter. See, there are people who, who would put those arguments to you about the empirical evidence around your app and everything like that. Um, but I will say 
you know, Brad doesn't believe men and women. He, he's also uh, covered your case as well, defending you too. But it's just, it's just this bathroom topic I, found, I find interesting. Um, but that's not to say there are trans activists who will still say there's no empirical evidence on any, any of the concerns, you know? So yeah. the argument still um, holds. Yeah, I just like, I don't know, maybe he has a little blind spot there. Mm. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious to see. I'll, I'll ask him what he thinks. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's like, you know, as I said at the very beginning of this, you know, everyone's on their journey. We get there at all different times. So, you know, it was sort of sometimes we are talking over each other in that respect where, you know, I know that there are some people still going, oh, there's a middle ground here. We'll just have to be kind. And they'll eventually realize that there's no middle ground in bullshit. What Nancy Mace and what Speaker Johnson are doing are endangering all women and girls. Because if you ask them, what is your plan on how to enforce this? They won't come up with an answer. And what it, it inevitably results in are women and girls who are primed for assault because they want, because people are gonna wanna check their private parts in suspecting who is trans and who is cis and who's doing what. And so the idea that Nancy Mace wants little girls and women to drop trow in front of who? An investigator? Who would that be in order because she wants to suspect and point fingers at who she thinks is trans is disgusting. It is disgusting. And frankly, all it does is allow these Republicans to go around and bully any woman who isn't wearing a skirt because they think she might not look woman enough. People have a right to express themselves, to dress how they want, and to be who they are. And if a woman doesn't look woman enough to a Republican, they want to be able to inspect her genitals to use a bathroom? It's disgusting. And everybody, no matter how you feel on this issue, should reject it completely. What are they doing? They're doing this so that Nancy Mace can make a buck and send a text and, and fundraise off an email. They're not doing this to protect people. They're endangering women. They're endangering girls of all kinds. And everybody should reject it. It's gross. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just can't believe she embarrassed herself like that. Literally no one is suggesting genital inspections. No one. I've never heard anyone argue for that. Yeah. You know? not, not a single person. I don't have to see her genitals to know that she's a woman. Like I'm just watching a video of her and I know she's a woman. AOC, it just no one's making that the argument. We human beings can tell the sex of each other in like milliseconds. No one is looking at Sarah M McBride thinking he's a woman. He's clearly a man. He doesn't have to get undressed for us to know. We just have to look at his face. Like anyone watching this right now, they're just seeing our faces. They know what sex both of us are. It's just literally that she's not even how human beings work. It's just ideological nonsense. I cannot fathom someone humiliating themselves by saying that. And I bet she's one of the ones that in years to come will deny she ever said it. We get out of the water, uh, we go, yeah, you can see here, we both went 143.40. And so we tied and we go behind the awards podium where the NCAA official looks at Thomas and myself and says, great job, but you guys tied. And we only have one trophy. So we're gonna give this trophy to Leah. Uh, so we're gonna give this trophy to Leah. So we're gonna give the trophy to Leah. We're giving this trophy to Leah. If you come in first, you'll get a gold medal. But if you come in fifth, actually, not even come in fifth, but if you tie for fifth, you can be on Fox News for the rest of your life. Hi, I'm Matt Bernstein, and welcome back to A Bit Fruity. It's really too bad I'm not better at swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Riley Gaines so is, is this someone I, who is this the you idea might not be that familiar with by name, bad is to but her? you are more than probably familiar with her face, with her appearances on Fox News, with her appearances on every conservative talk show. I do always wonder, like, how many people actually have any idea who she is, like, outside of this little, you know what I mean? I don't know. I've told a couple of people that I'm doing this episode, and they were like, who? And then I show them a video, and they're like, oh. Really, anytime I see content where she's featured, it's just 10,000 comments being like, finally, a champion for women. Yeah, I mean, if you get, like, really deep in her replies, she also has a dedicated group of like transvestigators which is another like very funny and 
completely inevitable thing. And even if you aren't familiar with her name or her face, you've almost definitely felt the effects of Riley Gaines' right-wing rhetoric, the effects of the laws that have been passed that she's lobbied for, the effects she's had on Donald Trump's administration, all of which we're going to get to. Anyway, they go on and on, but I just think it's fascinating, it's, these two men. It's just so misogynistic. Like, yeah. Like, you know, like this, this young woman stood up for herself and then people listened and she took opportunities to keep speaking about it. Like, it's one of the things with cancel culture where they'll say like, oh, you know, if you even ever get to speak publicly again, you're not really canceled. And it's first of all, it's like, do you know how hard it is to find those opportunities and, and how much work is involved to get there? But also it's like, yeah, we understand that the goal is that you never hear from us again. And so the fact that we've managed to like climb out from the depths of your nonsense to keep going, like, well, not going to apologize for it. Um, yeah. I mean, Leah Thomas is a man and he's competing in women's sports. He was like 470, 460, ranked 462 in men's and then number one in women's. And they're going to say there's not a problem. It's not like he started training harder. Like the fact that there were some girls who could actually like tie with him or, or win against him actually just shows how crap he was. But he still took opportunities away because the mo like, it's not even about like whether the men will win. At the moment there's a man in the race, one girl is missing out on being in it to even have a shot. So he still mm -hmm. goes at opportunities he's taking it away from. Um, also, incidentally, when the other dude, is it Ari, whatever his name is, um, comes on the screen, you can instantly tell he's a guy. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. think you're right. Yeah, you don't even need to see his genitals. Um, it's just, it's misogyny, it's sexism, it's nonsense. And look, they don't, they don't have to like us, that's fine. But they do have to live in reality. And that, like, that's, just, that's just a fact of life. Born male, die male. Like, the most I'll say to them is like, I'm sorry you don't like being male. That you're going to have to deal with it because it's going to dictate lots of things in your life. There's lots of things where it won't. You, you can have, we can wear makeup, you can have long nails, whatever. Enjoy yourself. Like, we have this one life to live, and you're sitting there trying to make that one life a complete lie? Like, no wonder you're so bitter.